from the Boston Museum of Science, SciTech Today on NECN. No one likes a bee sting, and our fear of bees is a common Hollywood theme, as you just saw there in the 1978 film, The Swarm. But a recent study suggests that bee toxins might actually be useful in the fight against cancer. Joining us now from Boston's Museum of Science is nanotechnology correspondent Alex Fiorentino. Alex, good to see you, and I like the costume. What's up with that? Uh, well, you know, anything for science, Karen. Uh, obviously, nobody really likes getting stung by a bee, and it can even be dangerous. As many as 50 Americans per year die from allergic reactions to bee stings. But what actually happens when a bee stings you is that it injects you with a poison, a toxic chemical called melatonin that actually kills your cells by destroying their membranes. Now, scientists have known for actually quite a while that melatonin can also kill cancer cells. Uh, Japanese researchers first used it against ovarian cancer cells back in 1989. But the problem is that melatonin doesn't just attack cancer cells, it also attacks pretty much any other kind of cell that it comes into contact with. So the real challenge here is how do we use this toxin against cancer cells without harming healthy cells along the way? So Alex, who took on that challenge? Well, actually, it turned out that a pair of researchers from Washington University in St. Louis were perfect for this, this problem. Dr. Paul Schlesinger was an expert on melatonin, and Dr. Samuel Wickline had been working on tiny nanoparticles to deliver drugs to tumors. So they worked together. They, they actually took a tiny nanoparticle that Dr. Wickline had been using, basically just a, a drop of oil a few millionths of an inch in diameter, and they covered it with melatonin. Um, so imagine that these little tacks are the melatonin molecules, they found that the melatonin easily stuck into the surface of the, of the membrane of the nanoparticle. And voila, they had created a tiny carrying case for these melatonin molecules. They called this device a nano B. That's appropriate, wouldn't you say? <laughs> well, so I would. What do you do with that then? Um, well, to explain this, we've got a short animation that we put together here at the museum. So what you should be looking at is a, a greatly enlarged computer model of a tiny nanoparticle. And the red dots all over it represent the melatonin molecules. So they inject thousands of these nanoparticles into the bloodstream. And the nanoparticles are targeted to tumors. So they attach to the surface of cancer cells. And the melatonin flows across onto the cancer cell membrane. And it, it destroys it. It kills the cancer cell. But how is this, Alex, different than other targeted cancer therapies? Uh, well, most other cancer therapies attack cells on the inside. Um, but cancer cells, in a way, are kind of smart. They can develop defenses and resistance to these drugs. So the bee venom, on the other hand, attacks cancer cells right on the surface. Uh, and so it really doesn't even give them much of a chance to defend against this attack. Well, this is potentially huge. Yeah, that's right. Um, bees are, are doing their best. Um, but uh, this, this has been very encouraging, these results, but we're not there yet. The next step for these scientists is to try to test this out in another type of animal model, maybe a rabbit. Um, and if those tests go well, then it will be on to human clinical trials. And that could be how far off? It's hard to say. They're going to start talking about the next animal model later this year or in, in the next year, um, and then the clinical trials will be sometime after that. Well, Alex, it's been absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much for joining us. And hey, I might want to grab that bee costume for Matt for <laughs> Halloween. He's been sure. talking about needing one. But fascinating. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for having me, Karen. And join us every Thursday morning at this time for SciTech Today, or you can log on to the Museum of Science website, mos.org.